So they said, you got, by the time they stripped us, or I thought they had stripped us culturally, of course they never can strip us because they took the drum, and the next thing you know, we're beating on barrels. And then beating barrels into steel drums. And we create new instruments. And then they say, well, we're going to take those away from you. Next thing you know, we bend over and start slapping our thighs and everything. <laughs> we made an instrument out of our body. So they can't take it away, but they try to keep Africans from acting like Africans through ridicule, through suppression. Change the names of Africans. The, this is a big one, changing the identity of Africans. I just wrote a paper, in fact, I think they got some over there that I delivered up in Chicago last week, called Race, Identity, Hegemony, and Education. And I try to take this thing of hegemony and the socialization process, I try to take that thing apart, looking especially, because some white guy called a meeting, got some money, called a meeting, for black people to come together and discuss black racial identity. <laughs> well, see, that's the trick. <laughs> to get us to focus on phenotypical features. They might as well call us not the black people, but the big nose people. And then we'd be talking about black nose identity. <laughs> the big lip people, the, the lip identity. <laughs> the big foot people, big butt people, the black butt identity. <laughs> The long-headed people, the long black head identity. Why? Because they don't want us to remember Septepi. Oh, we know we're black. And we finally got proud in the 60s of that. But the, the conversation stopped because we thought it was about color, not about culture. And they knew how to cripple us. And then they teach white supremacy, and this is the one that I'm talking about today in this Beyond Y2K. This is the problem that we've got. This control, that's what Detroit is struggling with right now. It's not struggling with governance. It's not struggling with finance. It's struggling with who will define what it is that African people will learn. That's what's being discussed. That's what's being discussed. We as a people sit right now in a situation where we're controlled from the cradle to the grave. We have never been in a worse situation than we're in right now. For the simple reason that we control less of the time of our children than we ever controlled before, and more of the time of our people, socialization-wise, is under the control of somebody else. How do you say it? We got a million Africans in prison. Their socialization is under control. Don't have to worry about them. If I want to send a book to somebody in prison, I have so many restrictions, it's hard for me to get a book into the prison. And then they decide when they want to close the library, which some prisons have closed, and the classes, which some prisons have closed, and who gets to speak. So here's a million Africans in the prime of their life, many of them serving long-term sentences, and if you ask who will pass on the culture to them, it's in the hands of somebody else. Your babies, your culture is in the hands of somebody else right now. If you send them to a Head Start program, I'm one of the Head Start people because I think that we're supposed to have the money and they ought to do a good job by what the program does, but who is in charge of Head Start? See? <laughs> you not. <laughs> Nothing ASCAC says is going to go into Head Start. We well, don't have access to that. What about zero to three? While you were watching Head Start, zero to three came. What's zero to three? That's the first three years. People say we need to set up a program for the first three. Anytime somebody says set up a program, ask, what is it? <laughs> you got to understand that we have control from the left and the right. You hear me? Because some of us don't understand it. We think the right wing is the only one trying to control it. Left wing too always has tried to control it. They only differ on how to control it. 
question of smiling or frowning genocide. All I'm trying to do is get our comb back. That's all I want. I want my comb. And then I will comb my own hair without a dab of brill cream. Africans said we were stars. That's what they said. They said when they finished looking at those nebula, the Orion configuration, when they stopped looking at that, they said, that's where we came from. Look, they, when I showed you the Sahu Nebula, they identified that as the birthplace and the place to which they were returned. That sounds far-fetched. It did sound far-fetched, but then you stop. Nebulas are the birthplace of worlds. Maybe they were right after all. You see what I'm saying? And that when you die, does the spirit return to become a part of its origin? A star, a saber. That's what we're supposed to be talking about. You can't talk about it in no privatized school. Oh, I know they're going to go to two or three of us and convince us that we go along with them. They're going to let us do an African thing for a minute. I agree if you could get the money and do an African thing, you ought to get the money and do an African thing. But you first ought to ask Bernita Thompson in Washington, D.C., who had a private school that was not paid for by anybody. What happened when the accreditation people came? They said, yes, we know you turned out students, one of whom last year got 1,600 a perfect score on the SAT. But you cannot be accredited because you don't qualify. You pushing the children too hard. Your little babies are being hurried. You see? <laughs> Y'all don't see it yet. Look, go to Chick Elementary School in Kansas City. Chick Elementary School in Kansas City had higher scores than the white schools, African public schools, and they wouldn't even print the results of the research wouldn't print the results of the research. You got to deal with something. If the African public school that's running an African curriculum program, because people always say, you want to do that, but we want high standards. As if those two things are inconsistent. But here we are saying not only are they consistent, but they are extremely powerful. Watch what's happening to all Africans. Why did the State Department in California spend almost six months trying to close the Marcus Garvey School when it's a private school. You see? Why? Look, don't believe when some right-wing person gets the principle of privatization established, the rug will be pulled out from under all Africans who have independent education. Here are people who don't know what time it is. <laughs> don't know how to make computers run after they build them. <laughs> don't know how to stop polluting. Don't can't follow. Can't follow the declarations of virtue where it says, I have not polluted the waters. I have not done that. They polluted everything. Can't even stop polluting to destroy the ozone in the sky even though it's killing them first. <laughs> no ozone, high ultraviolet, high ultraviolet, more skin cancer with no melanin. I'm talking about in 10 years jumping from one in 10 melanomas of the skin to one in three. Those are figures from the Center for Disease Control. And they say, well, no, we got to keep putting exhaust up in the air. Keep spraying all of these gases and destroy the ozone. The South Pole is showing bare rocks right now. It used to be 50 feet under snow. And they say, oh, it's just part of the cycle. Can't predict which way the stock market is going. 
invented new ways to trade so that the computers now are out of control in moving money back and forth. And they're sitting there watching for 10,000 to be broken. It was broken for a minute the other day, and people say, I want to be in, but I don't want to be in because it's going to break. Everybody knows it's going to break. They don't know when it's going to break, but then they worry, maybe it won't break. Maybe it's going up. I bet if my greed tells me I got to get back in here. <laughs> now you want to turn the education of African children over to people who think that way. See? You want to do that in Detroit. Where, who will be the think tank for your mayor? Probably the governor to tell him who to appoint and how to appoint them here in Detroit. I'm not just talking about Detroit. We're fighting the same battle in Atlanta where the blo a black board is going to go buy services and turn our children over to a private company and let them raise our children for us. I've already said we don't have control of the socialization process of our people. Because if we had control of the socialization process, it would be a lot different. Here's where we're headed. I'll show you a couple more and I'm done. <laughs> you know we like to hear that, but I gotta respect these other speakers. Here's where we're headed. This is the new South Africa. These are little kids who are being exhibited in a zoo because there's no work for them. So they get a, a little change to go and become objects of curiosity for the people who come to the zoo. See? You say, well, Asa, that's a, no, 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 we started out this century putting black Africans in zoos for white people to look at. Look at out of Benga at the World's Fair exhibited with a monkey and then put in a zoo in Brooklyn, New York to be exhibited because that's the, when people write bell curve books, that's the only future they can imagine for us. Or the unsocialized African. That's the only other future that they can imagine for us. Crazy consumer. Nike hat. Tommy Hill figure jacket, yeah. Calvin Klein shorts. <laughs> the consumer, that's what they see from, they don't see sabers, they don't see stars, they don't understand septepi. Well why if they're the one that don't understand these things do I have to be worried about it and make Y2K my problem? I have a septepi problem. I have a hey hey problem. Hey is H H. The little dots that I'm missing in the book, but uh, it means eternity. It's one of the forms of eternity. A couple different terms for eternity. So from the first time to eternity, from here to eternity, that's the time. That's the time clock we're supposed to be functioning on. What is the agenda for people who are building for eternity? You can't privatize that. You might wonder, this is my last slide. You know, some people ask me sometimes, Asa, how long have you been worried about these kind of things? Well, I haven't always had the right language. You know, I didn't always have the right information. In fact, at some points, I didn't have any information. But let me tell you what happened. And I happen to have this old photograph from 1949. And uh, that's an African dance ensemble in Denver, Colorado. And that's me. <laughs> and that's my wife, right there. Now I want to tell you what this is. The, the, the woman who awakened our love for Africa, named Mrs. Smith, and I have to give honor to her. She's one of the few black teachers in, in Denver. 
And uh, that's her son. He's still living. He tells me he has a better photograph of this uh, news article that came out. But she was the one that prepared us for the time when the African continent began to gain, quote, liberation for people like Tom Mboya, uh, for Kenneth Kaunda, for Kwame Nkrumah, and so forth. And so as a little child, the control of the socialization process was in the hand of somebody in our community who loved us. And they taught us how to love and how to love ourselves. Because if you don't love yourself, you can't love anybody else. What we should be doing is moving from Septepi to Hehe. Thank you. <laughs>